we have a very, 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 very special, special, special guest. Okay, Abuna Musa is visiting us here from Nairobi. He's a missionary priest over there in Kenya. Ruth. Where the book of Ruth stands in the Bible, it is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and then what? Ruth. It is the book number, number what? Number eight in the Bible in the Old Testament. And the, the book of Ruth is four chapters, only four chapters. In the Old Testament, you will see two books named by ladies, by women. Ruth and, and Esther. Ruth is a Moabite. And I will tell you what is a Moabite. But she is a Gentile. Esther was what? A Jewish. Uh, Esther was in the exile. Ruth was another area. And you know the story from the book of Ruth. Number two is the story of Ruth carry her name 12 times in this book. And after the Ruth 4, we never hear about Ruth till Matthew 1, when she appeared again in the race of Christ in Matthew 1. So it is only in this book her name and then directly to Matthew 1. Another thing about Ruth is, which is not about Ruth, only about every book in the Bible, I think I'm making a big mistake if I'm following characters without God behind those characters. I mean, we love Abraham, but for sure we love God of Abraham more. We like Isaac, but God of Isaac is better. When you read the Bible, please, yes, I'm asking you to look at the characters, analyze and maybe imitate, but don't forget, we care more about the one who is behind those characters. And one of them today his name is Boaz, and Boaz in this book equal Jesus, Christ himself. And you will discover with me that the story is not about truth, it's about whom? Boaz. And we'll know who is Boaz and what is his, his work and how can he work in us also. The book is four chapters, as I said, start with a funeral, actually three funerals, and end up with a wedding, joy. Start with three ladies, have nothing, have no kids and end up with someone who related to Christ. At the end you will see Ruth is the grandmother of King David. King David. The one whom God said, I am searching for hearts and I found the heart of David. The heart is like mine. Who do, who is doing my, my will. Let us see the story. How many of us know the story of Ruth? Okay. For, uh, for us all, oh, let me summarize it because we cannot read it, the four chapters. Let me summarize it. Uh, the Bible said that there's a family living in Bethlehem. This family was the, the father, his name, is, his name is Abi Malik, and his wife, Naomi, and two, two boys, Mahlun and Kilion. And uh, they were living in Bethlehem. Suddenly came um, a famine in Bethlehem, so they went looking for food in a place called Moab. And I will tell you what is Moab. Being in Moab for many years, Mahlon died, Kilion died, and before them, Abi Malik died. But there, Mahlon and Kilion, before their death, they married two ladies, Orpha and Ruth. After the death of the three men, the family went back to Jerusalem. Naomi was very bitter. In the middle of the way, Orpha said, bye-bye, I can't wait, I can't go with you, and she went back. Who remained with Naomi? Only Ruth. Being at home, she was looking for food. She started getting food from the field of the man called Boaz. Then later on, she joined Boaz, and at the end, she married Boaz, but Boaz married her after paying a price. And after marrying her, the name which was dead, the now it's, how, it's now a new name, a new birth, a joy. And Naomi became happy. And the whole world get benefit from this Ruth. Let me tell you the meaning of the names because this will make a difference with us. Abimelech means God is my king. Naomi means grace. Mahlun 
means weak. Kilion means sick. Orpha means her neck. And neck in the Bible refer to the will. He said they are stiff, stiff what? Stiff neck, right? The neck is what is hard. And, and the last one, Ruth. And Ruth means beautiful or flower. And this, is, this name is in the first chapter. And the second chapter we'll see Boaz. And Boaz means in him there is strength. In Boaz, there is what? Strength. I think uh, Andrew put for us the, the verses. Let us read the first verse. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. Judges ruled for, for 250 years in the Old Testament. A very dark and a very bad time for the people of Israel. 250 years you can read this book of Judges. Thirteen judges appeared in this book. Maybe you know some of them. One of them was very famous. What's his name? With the long hair, what's his name? Samson. What is the key verse of the book of, of, book of Judges? Then the people of Israel did wicked things in the eyes of God. Everyone did what was pleased in his own eyes. Then the Lord delivered them to their enemies. Then they cry. Then the Lord sent a judge. Judge here is a savior. To save them from their enemies. Then, coming back to the same verse. They went back and did what was bad in there. In the eyes of, of God. In the middle of this dark area. In the middle of this darkness. Came the story of whom? Of Ruth. And this gives us hope actually. When you see things dark. I always, when someone said, Father, you know, everything is bad. And I, I, I always tell them, I don't believe you. For sure, among the darkness, there is some what? There is some light. And in the middle of darkness of the book of Judges, came the story of whom? Of Ruth. Let us read the second verse, which said, A man went from Bethlehem, right? Where? To? To where? Can you read, please? To where? And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judea went to dwell in country of of where Moab. What is the meaning of Bethlehem? Bethlehem means what? Hmm. House of what? Of bread. House of bread, where you can get what? Food, where you can be satisfied. He went from this place to a place called what? Moab. Why he went? Because there was what? Hunger. And this word is very common, especially in the Old Testament. Let me refresh your memory. Abraham had a famine, right? But remember, when we have, when we have a need, normally we rush to satisfy our, our needs. But take care. Maybe you are moving in the wrong direction. If there is no job in this sea, you will you'll go to another state. If my business went down here, I will rush to another place. But does, does God agree on this or not? Let me remind you, Abraham went from where the Lord told him to Egypt. Looking for what? For the same purpose, for food. What happened there? You remember? He lied. And he said, Sarah is my sister and he was about to lose whom Sarah later on Isaac did the same do you remember this later on they went to Egypt with Jacob looking for food and they're supposed to get food and then go back to their own land yet they remained for how many years 400 years take care maybe the Lord wants you to stay in your place and he will feed you in the middle of the hunger maybe you will be there and you carry a part of the cross. But don't run without asking the Lord, can I go or what? Or not. Let me remind you, when Abraham went to Egypt, he took with him whom? Lot. Do you remember this? So when the shepherd of Lot and the shepherd of Abraham fought together, Lot to Abraham told him, look, we are brothers. If you go right, I go left. If you go left, I go right. 
And Lot said a very important verse. He looked at the land and it reminds him of the land of Egypt. Yes, he went back from Egypt, but Egypt is where? Still in his mind. I cannot forget. A very fertile land, water, everything is there. Then what happened? Lot chose the good land. What was the good land? Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh. He chose the good land in his sight, but it wasn't God's will. And Lot later on, everything was burned, and he lost everything. And this is the word Moab came from. If you remember, when Lot went out from Sodom and Gomorrah, he was told to run on the mountain, right? Right or not? He went with his two daughters, and the Bible said something very sad. The two daughters said, We don't have a man to have with us like the whole earth. Let us give our father a drink and let us sleep with him. And the the two daughters slept with their fathers. And the firstborn, his name is Moab. And Moab means who is his father. You can read this, I think, in the book of Genesis chapter, I think, 19. Who is Moab? A result of what? Of sin. Abi Malik, where are you going? I'm going to Moab. I'm going to be fed in Moab. But do you think Moab, where you'll get your food, my brother? You don't know who is Moab. You don't know the history of Moab. The Moabites remain against the Israelites in their journey. The Moabites were among the people who were fighting the Israelites. The Moabites are always representing out of God's will and out of God's commandments. We don't care about where are you, but we care about are you really in the land of God or or not. How many among us really choose food and forget about the Moabites and Moab? My brothers and sisters, Every decision, any decision in this world has a, has a cost. If you gain something, don't worry. You will lose what? Something else. But take care. What are you gaining and what are you what? Losing. Be careful and be wise. And be wise. The man left looking for food. But he went to Moab. Very sad to tell you that Mahlon the weak died and Kilion the sick died and when you think about how Naomi and Abimelech got Mahlon and Kilion I think I, I fear sometimes because big names sometimes maybe they don't care about their own what? Kids Eli the high priest his two sons Phinehas and Hophni commit sin in the tabernacle Samuel the great king His two sons accept bribe. Very fearful. Very. And we should be very fearful, by the way. Don't take a decision which can destroy everything. Don't look under your feet. Look where? Ahead. After ten years, my brothers and sisters, Naomi and Orpha and Ruth are what? Alone. Imagine with me three widows. Oh, three widows. Christ many times did do something did something well with the widows, right? Three widows in the same house. Broken heart, broken heart. Look at behind you like this. Where were we? We were in Bethlehem, but then we went to Moab, and then we lost what? Everything. Three widows without a man. But see how the Lord starts to work back again. See with me verse 6. Verse 6 said, hmm? Then, where exactly when I can see it? 
Then she rose. I can't see it. Both of them, or, or Naomi went, rose and, and went back from Moab, right? Right? Back to Beth Lehem. Are we together? When was that? Because she heard that the Lord what? The Lord what? Visits you and give them what? Food. How was, how can you move back? Listen to how the Lord is feeding his, his people. She heard the same God in Bethlehem still feeding his people. And he gave them what? Food. Good news to hear. And from time to time we have to understand the Lord is waking us, awaking us by good what? Good news. There is, there is desperate in our family. Another family give us hope. There is desperate in my friends. Another one give us what? Hope. Who is moving all this? The Lord himself. They went back, but on the way, Naomi told them, go back. If even God gave me kids, till they grow, you'll be also old and you'll never have kids. Go back. Naomi forced them to go back and I don't think Naomi expected that even one of them would remain with her. Orpha said, Orpha and Ruth said, no, we'll go with you. In the middle of the way, Orpha said what? Bye-bye. But she said bye-bye in a gentle way. The Bible said she kissed her, you see? Bye-bye. There is believers, you call them halfway believers, right? Halfway. I'm with you till here. But back, my heart is where? In Moab. My heart is in Moab. They give God a hard time in the wilderness. Why? Because from every, every time they look where? The back. They look at the back. And they told Moses once, you've, took, you've taken us out to bury us in the wilderness. The one who saved them, he's the same one who was accused that you are going to take them to kill them in the wilderness. No. Orpha represent half believer. Halfway. When it comes to serious commitment, I'm stepping where? Outside. I can easily talk, but when it comes to work, I give you a good kiss. I say what? Bye-bye. Luke 14 is a great example. The, the parable of the banquet. You know it? Remember this, huh? He gave to them everything is what? Is ready. Come. But one of them said, Excuse me, I bought a land. Look at it. Excuse me. Very what? Very gentle. Excuse me, I have just married. Excuse me, I have some kids. Excuse me, I'm not doing sin. Yes, but you are not in the commitment, full commitment of God. There is, there is, there is a trend of compromise. Don't be an extreme. Don't be on the right side or don't be far in the east. Be where? In the middle. But in commitment, there is something called what? Midway. You cannot serve two what? Two masters. Orpha kissed her and she left. But Ruth said the verse which I want us to keep in this chapter, the first chapter. What did she say? She said in verse 16. I'll read Abuna. Abuna it for us, yes. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. What a commitment. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. Who thinks so? A Moabite. A Gentile. A Gentile. Ask my father, I'm sure sometimes you see those who even doesn't come to church, those who are far and they give you lessons. They give you lessons. And they teach you some lessons which we really lack in our hearts. How many of us are commitment with God like this? Wherever you go, I will go. Your people are my people. 
You are my God, I will not forsake you. And many commentators said that the secret that she found Naomi is a good lady. Normally there's fractions between wives and their mothers in law. You know this. But Naomi was perfect. And that's why she approached whom? Ruth. Sometimes we expect elders to act like mature people, right? But here Ruth, as a young star, act like what? Like big people. Sometimes your daughter might give you a lesson. Sometimes your younger brother will give you a lesson. Make your ears what? Ready. She went. She said, I will be with you. And it's amazing to see Ruth commitment to God like this. I will be with you and I will not leave you. Going back to Bethlehem, the whole city, the Bible said, was shaken. They found Naomi, another lady. And she told them, the mighty God had afflicted me and I am bitter. Don't call me Naomi. I'm what? Bitter. Very sad story. Yet, she's back in Beth what? Bethlehem. I don't think that we, when we are bitter sometimes, we go back to Bethlehem. Many times when we are bitter from people or from God, we do what? We say bye-bye. I'm bitter and I will remain what? Bitter forever. Can the Lord deal with Ruth and Naomi? Yes. And now the story will take another corner. The best corner. Boaz will do what? Will appear. Boaz means what? In him there is what? Strength. Boaz will appear. And I believe the story is not about truth. The story is about whom? Boaz. Let us see how the Bible describes Boaz. Chapter 2. Verse 1. Yes. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moab- Moabitess said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him, in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Just a minute. She went looking for what now? For food. By the law of God, when the Israelites was ordered to plant, you plant, yes, but when you harvest, don't harvest from the corners. Okay? From what? From the corners. And if you... Harvest like you catch in your hand like this. Whatever goes down, don't go and pick it. This is for the strangers and for the poor people. And the Lord meant by this to show his mercies even from the the crops, from whatever they plant. So Ruth went looking only for what? For the corn. So it is known if you are down, you are not an Israelite, right? If you are down, whether you are a stranger, you are poor, or you are an orphan, you are in a miserable life. That's why you, you are where? Down. Boaz came. Your Bible, Bible said, when, he, when they saw him, he, he said, God is with you. Right? See? You see Christ from the back? Emmanuel, God is what? Is with us. Now Boaz went to the field and Looking, he found a strange lady. He said, who is she? She told, he told him, this is Rao Ruth. She came with her mother-in-law from Moab. And Boaz gave a special care to Ruth. Like Jesus. Imagine with me if the Lord entered from the gate here. Do you think he will sit with whom? Beside whom? 
I said for sure the fathers you know no I believe Christ will sit beside the most miserable person and the most person who need help and the most person who is broken hearted there he will choose to sit beside and comfort and that's why he did that's what he did exactly he found Ruth and Ruth was working very hard by the way if you read the Bible she was working very hard and he keep an eye on her and he keep an eye on her another thing he did he gave her more than she expect look at with me at verse look at verse 8 then Boaz said to Ruth you will listen my daughter will my you? what my what a Moabites is now what his daughter hmm don't go do not go to glean in another field nor go from here but stay close by my young women let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them have I not commanded the young men not to touch you and when you are thirsty go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn so she fell on her face bowed to the, down to the ground and said to him why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner just a minute what did Boaz did? He gave her more than she expect. And what was the result? She fell on her face. And she gave him these nice words. How could I find favor in your eyes? Even I'm what? A stranger. My brothers and sisters, uh, the same verse we need. Why God found favor in, a, in us what is exactly in me will make God to find favor in me you know the truth nothing it is his grace not my own righteousness not my own righteousness if you did the best in God's eyes all of us are aware still unworthy he is the one who gave us the grace and he is the one who lifts us up. And he is the one who will find favor in his eyes. Some commentators said, you know, St. Paul is a great preacher. But he said one verse they don't agree with. When he said, faithful and truthful is the word of God. That the grace of God came to save the, the sinners. And I am the chief of what? Of the sinners. Paul, yes. Because he knows, he knows exactly what is the meaning of being foreigner out of the family of God. Where where our life would be if Christ did not come to our lives, brothers and sisters? Do you think where will we be? We'll be out. Not out of the church, of the building, no. Out of his family. And literally out of life. Yet he is ready to come and pick us and we find favor in his eyes. When you stand to pray, tell him, thank you. Because I found favor in your eyes, and I don't know why, but it is you. God is love, and he will never change. He will never change. He will never change. He will be the same God. God who favored the sinners, and the weak, and the strangers. In Ephesians 2.19, he said, we are no longer strangers but in his house and in his household he was talking to the Ephesians who lived their lives committing sin and adultery in the temple yet they are now what no more what stranger now something great happened Ruth and Boaz are communicating she heard about God but now she's speaking to someone maybe a big man in God's family, Boaz. Boaz give her food. But I love the next verse. Verse 11. 
And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me that all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. Mm -hmm. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. I love this verse. Under his wings you come for what? For refuge. Under where? Under where? His wings. In the journey of Israel, he said, I've carried you on my what? Wings. But Ruth is where now? Under his wings. There's a song called Under Shadows of His Wings, you know? Under his wings. If you go through the, the book of Psalms, you'll find many times under what? His wings, under his wings, under his wings, under his protection, under his love, under his grace, you are protected. Don't look around you, please. Don't see what's going around you only. I wish that God opened our eyes to see his wings doing what? Protecting us. You know the word Passover one of the meaning of the word Passover is he is covering the doors with his wings that the, that the death will not come into these houses. Christ is doing this with me and with you when you come and under what? His wings. And I like this, this meditation about the tabernacle. The tabernacle looks from outside what? Sorry to say, ugly. The colors outside, red, purple, but one color is inside. What is this color? Blue. Heaven. Don't take Jesus from outside, please. Go where? Under where? His wings. And now you'll see things maybe different. Maybe you'll see things, and for sure you'll see him differently. Boaz is taking care now of Ruth. And Ruth is a part of Boaz. You know what happened after? He told her, Put for her whatever she want. And she took a lot of food. And the second chapter end, ends where the harvest is gone. Everything she satisfied. And she went back with the food to her mother-in-law, Naomi. What is after? What will happen after? I came to Christ. And Christ satisfied my needs. What is after now? You young stars who said, Lord, give me a job. Sawa. Okay. Give me a wife. Okay. For those who doesn't have now, you will get. Give me a big house. Okay. Give me a car. Okay. He gave. He gave. He gave. He gave. The problem is after he gave all what you ask, what you will do after this. Will you remain with him or not? The harvest has gone. And she took everything. She took food for her and for her family. And now all her needs are satisfied. What you will do after? Christ told them in John 6, You have followed me because you... I fed you, right? Right? Now we have to take the, the true bread. In chapter 3, Naomi advised... Ruth, go into his tent and lift up the bed sheet and sleep under his feet. Look at verse Look at verse 4. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do. Wow. After my needs were satisfied. Where shall I go now? Under where? Under his feet. Do you remember who sat under his feet? In the New Testament? Someone was going around preparing food. Do you remember this? And someone was where? Under. Who is this? Mary. Mary. This is the best place where you can get everything. 
God doesn't want us to be happy when he gives us some things. He wants us to come and sit and listen and obey what he is saying. And Ruth the Moabites is now under Boaz's feet. And I think she went because the grace she found in his eyes and what he did actually for us. And I think all of us, if we truly speaking saying, want to say what God did for us, he did what? A lot. And he did more than we expect. And he dealt with us not according to our sins, but according to his mercies. And that's why we are not only bowing our heads, but bowing our hearts before him. When you go to pray, please, sometimes we go to pray with a list, right? I prefer we start to go and sit and do what? Listen. And sometimes before God want to answer me, I said, bye-bye. It's done. Quiet time does not mean as you, I think you know all of us, all of you, that you speak only. Many times you have to do what? To listen. And he will speak. And he will speak for sure. He is speaking. He spoke. And he is speaking. And he will speak. And he will not stop giving you and me the true bread of life. Ruth now is under his feet. The best place. And I think in Song of Songs chapter 2 he said, My dove, my beloved, show me your face. Let me hear your voice. Your face is beautiful and your voice is nice. He is approaching us to go where? Under his feet. Boaz woke up, he found her, and he didn't touch her. He didn't. The man was faithful to her. And she told her, told her, give her food, go back, and I will do something for you. We are in the last chapter now, chapter 4. Are you tired? Chapter 4. And I think this is the best chapter of the whole book of Ruth now Boaz will put all what he wants in action let me tell you the background of chapter 4 in the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus the Lord told them the land is not yours the land is for God let me remind you he told Joshua the land which you step over I have already given to to you so the land was not for them it is for God and from God to what? to them they inherit the land are we together? who gave them the land? God himself so he told them if anyone wants to sell his land not allowed to go out of the family you see if you are a Jewish if you are from a Balik family and you things went bad And you want to sell your land, no one will buy the land except one of your family. And he put the list. The first kinsman, you know kinsman? The first relative, okay? He will do what? Buy. But if the first kinsman said no, I cannot buy, the second kinsman should do what? Should buy. If the second no, who will buy? The third one. Boaz was the second kinsman. He was not what? The first kinsman. So he has to go and talk to the first kinsman and tell him, you are ready to buy the land from Abimelech or not? And let me tell you what the first kinsman did. Read with me verse 4. Abuna. And I thought to inform you, saying, buy it back in the presence of the inhabitants and the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is no one but you to redeem it, and I am next after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, On the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, 
you must also buy it from Ruth the Moabites, the wife of the dead, the, to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance. And the close relative said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I ruin my own inheritance. You redeem my right of redemption for yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Wow, the, f- the word here is redeem, right? The redeem. Boaz is what? Is a redeemer. You see, what was the first kinsman said? Why he said no? He said, you will buy. He said, I will buy. But when Boaz told him, you will buy Naomi and Ruth to have a new name from the dead, he said what? No. I cannot be related to a Gentile. I cannot bring corruption to my what? Inheritance. You take it. What does it mean? If you have the choice to adopt a halot, will you take her? No way. No way. Let me give you a story. Uh, as a missionary whom we know in Kenya this man said tell us his story and his story was great actually he is American and he has three kids then he starts to think with his wife to adopt yani, when you adopt you adopt from America okay he adopts three Koreans okay three Koreans and they were in the streets of North Korea and this is from his mouth he said imagine the table three Americans and three Koreans and he went to the court and he write his uh, huh? I don't know his what was say his his will yes his will and he said he gave them all the rights like his what his daughters all the rights like his daughters and the names changed from you feel so Wong and the last word is Warren and the first one is Julia this is American the sense Su Wong and Warren the same name but different what faces and he told me when they start to eat with us in the table they used to the Americans eat what they know the house okay <laughs> The other one eats what? They were in the street. They were hungry. And he told me they used to hide food in their pocket and take it in their rooms. They stole from the house some food. If you are the father, will you keep them? I don't think. You say, I've made a wrong what? Decision. If you are God and you were told to do this with us, you say, no. No, I cannot relate to this people. But Boaz, Christ, said, I will redeem. I will buy. We have been bought with a precious what? Blood. He bought us. And he bare with all our weaknesses and said, I will buy. I will not only buy, I will buy. And at the end, I will get a name of the dead body. I will give a name. A new name will come from Abimelech. And Boaz redeemed and bought the land and he bought also Ruth. And Boaz married Ruth. And Boaz, after married, married, get married to Ruth, he got a son called Obed. And Obed was given to Naomi back. And Naomi was happy. And Ruth and Boaz became what? One. And from Boaz and Ruth came David. How great is Boaz? And how great is our God who is able again to go and pick from the Moabites people to him. It's our lesson, brothers and sisters. Expect God to do something even with the far people as he did for whom? For you. It is his grace not our own righteousness. It is his love. It is his wings. 
This is protection. It is his redemption. His redemption, not our redemption. Many commentators said the first kinsman was the law, and no one was justified by what? By the law. The law couldn't adopt God's people, but Boaz was able to do what? To adopt. I hope all of us go back home today with Boaz, not only with whom? With Ruth. Yes, we love Ruth. I love Ruth so much. But above all, we should love whom more? Boaz. What do they make of Boaz? In him there is what? Strength. And that's it. And that's it. Glory be to God forever and ever. I mean. Anyway.
we have a very, 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 very special, special, special guest. Okay, Abuna Musa is visiting us here from Nairobi. He's 